Good afternoon. My name is Stuart Picken. I'm the chairman of the International Advisory Board of IFR, the International Academic Forum. And I'm joined today by my colleague, uh, Mr. Junarima, who was seconded from the Ministry of the Economy, Trade and Industry to the Japan External Trade Organization, where he is currently Director General in London. Uh, this morning we had a number of interesting issues raised in uh, the, the open discussion and I'd like now for a few moments to follow up on one or two of these. And the first one was a concern that some members of the audience had that the increase in consumption tax mm -hmm. planned by the present Japanese government could impede rather than facilitate economic growth. And uh, I'd appreciate your observations on that. Um, thank you very much for your very much you know, valid question. And uh, this is actually a very much difficult problem uh, because on one hand, uh, we have to cope with uh, the fiscal deficit uh, per GDP. Uh, Japan's public deficit per GDP is over 200%. And it is not a sustainable situation uh, in macroeconomic terms. Mm -hmm. So we have to rectify this situation. At the same time, uh, we have to minimize uh, the negative impact of the increase of the consumption tax. And actually, uh, we have raised consumption tax from 5% to 8% uh, from this April. And uh, there was some concern whether uh, it could have some negative impact on Japanese economy. But uh, it seems to me that uh, the negative impact is very much minimal uh, looking at uh, the economic performance. So uh, I think you know, the raising consumption tax is a necessary, absolutely necessary, uh, for uh, rectifying uh, the fiscal discipline. And otherwise, uh, we will lose the confidence of the international investors. But at the same time, uh, we have to take a series of economic measures uh, to minimize uh, the negative impact on the economy. And uh, the big agenda for this government is uh, you know, the looking at uh, the general economic performance in this autumn. Uh, they will make a final decision whether or not uh, they're going to raise uh, the consumption tax from current 8% again to 10% next year. Uh, it will depend on the macroeconomic performance in this autumn. But uh, I personally believe that uh, the government should uh, increase uh, the consumption tax. When you say fiscal discipline, uh, there are different possible meanings to that expression, depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. What uh, in particular do you see as important in fiscal discipline mm -hmm. that would call for this tax increase? Yeah, um, you know, the uh, Japan is going towards uh, aging population. And uh, with the current consumption tax, uh, we cannot sustain uh, the social security system. So first, uh, we have to increase uh, consumption tax. At the same time, we have to review uh, the condition of the social security payment. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, the, uh, for such society as Japan, uh, rapidly going into aging society, cannot sustain uh, the social security, uh, social security systems. And then uh, also, in order to avoid uh, the situation like in Greece, uh, we have to regain uh, the fiscal discipline. Yes. Currently, Japanese government bond is owned mainly by domestic population. Uh, but uh, if international investors lose uh, their confidence, and if uh, at the same time, if in the, uh, international investors have more government bond, then uh, that could easily lead to a higher uh, interest rate of the long term, uh, long term interest rate of Japan's government bond. Under that situation, uh, the macroeconomic management is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. So we have to avoid that situation. This morning, the, the magic word abenomics mm -hmm. <coughs> was a central part of your presentation. Um, for the benefit of those who weren't present, could you elaborate a little bit on what, in fact, abenomics mm -hmm. actually means? Yeah, um, it is very difficult to uh, explain one word, word but uh, the abenomics is uh, so-called uh, three arrows. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, the board monetary policy and flexible fiscal policy mm -hmm. and growth strategy. And the three banking policies are essential uh, for uh, getting Japanese economy back to the agenda. And uh, up to now, I think uh, the Abenomics is going well by a board monetary policy and the flexible fiscal policy. And we have, to, uh, we have regained economic momentum and we have seen uh, positive real GDP growth in the most recent six consecutive quarters. But uh, in order to sustain uh, the economic growth for a longer period, 
uh, we need uh, structural uh, reforms. So that is uh, why the third arrow, uh, the growth strategy, is really important. And uh, the third arrow growth strategy has four key pillars. Uh, first one is, uh, you know, the regaining uh, the momentum for private investment. And the second is full use of human resources, including women, elderly, and youth. And the third, uh, to create a growth sector uh, through innovation and deregulation. And the fourth, uh, integration with global economy uh, through FTA, EPA, and uh, national special zones, and uh, attracting foreign direct investment. And uh, last year, uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, unveiled uh, the first version of the growth strategy. And uh, this year, actually last week, uh, Prime Minister Abe unveiled the second version of the growth strategy, uh, covering many areas. Uh, mm -hmm. And some of them have been uh, very much difficult areas to tackle uh, because of the traditional uh, you know, the resistance mm -hmm. uh, from vested interest groups. But, uh, you know, the, I think in particular this one, uh, this year's version, is very much bold and broad and uh, covering uh, such areas as labor market or agricultural sectors or power sectors or reduction of the corporate tax and so on. So I think, uh, you know, this year's version is very, very uh, bold and broad based. And if it is implemented as planned, then uh, that will have a um, significant impact to the Japanese economy. I remember reading the Nikkei Shimbun about his fourth arrow. Mm -hmm. Are we getting any comments on that one? Yeah, fourth arrow, uh, probably I think uh, we could argue that Olympic Paralympic game yeah. in 2020 could be called as fourth arrow because uh, not surprisingly it will have an enormous impact on public works mm -hmm. and also attracting foreign uh, investment to Japan and also attracting foreign visitors to Japan uh, resulting in uh, more globalization of Japanese economy as well as society. The, this, this morning we also had the reference to uh, Ezra Vogel's book, Japan is Number One, mm -hmm. uh, which was written at a time when Japan was uh, unquestionably <laughs> admired as mm. one of the most mm. uh, rounded, effective societies mm. in the whole of the entire world. Um, the image has been over the last uh, two decades of mm -hmm. um, slowing down and decline, which personally speaking, mm -hmm. I have a lot of doubts about. <laughs> um, but uh, what I'm interested in is the question of Japan coming back to mm -hmm. that position. Mm -hmm. um, of course, China's GDP is very large, mm -hmm. uh, but Japan is still the third largest economy in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. And in terms of actual production of income of the five top world regions, three mm. are in Japan, mm -hmm. Tokyo, Osaka, and uh, the Nagoya mm. Chubu region. Um, have you any comments on, or if, it were, if you had a crystal ball to look mm -hmm. at, mm -hmm. how do you see the future playing out? Uh, future playing out. <laughs> um, of course, I don't have a crystal ball, uh, <laughs> but uh, let's hope that uh, you know the current structural reform mm -hmm. it will be implemented as planned with um, you know strong political gumption, uh, because uh, this time I think many Japanese people believe that uh, we don't have no alternative but to change in order to regain uh, the economic momentum. Uh, we cannot emphasize that uh, you know Japan's economy size. <laughs> will become uh, the largest or you know the like in 1980s uh, but uh, Japan could be uh, the cutting-edge uh, innovator on various innovative technologies and we have a lot of you know sophisticated uh, business uh, you know the production basis or supply chain and so on so in many areas uh, Japan could still be very much competitive so in order to, uh, we need to say retain uh, this competitive edge in coming years so to do so, uh, we need to prepare many conducive environment for promoting R&D and also for promoting young, uh, the more, how can I say, uh, entrepreneurship uh, by promoting venture capital and so on. And also, um, you know, to introduce more competition in traditionally very much protective uh, areas like uh, agriculture or energy sector. Uh, by doing so, uh, we can create uh, many new entrants and a more competition, a more business dynamism. Uh, by doing so, I think, uh, I believe uh, Japan can do a lot in coming years. Mm. 
Well, you've got a new vision for Japan, and thank you, Junarima, for your time and trouble in working with us and in giving us these thoughts to for people to reflect on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.